Stan Jibalisco here, uh, continuing our tutorial video series in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, third edition published by McGraw-Hill in October of 2013. I recommend that you get the paper-bound version for a variety of reasons. Number one, it has a spiral binding and it'll lie flat on your workbench for you. You can fold it back like this. The paper is good heavy stock. It's built to last. And, last but not least, being paper and not a virtual book, it can acquire no bugs or viruses. It needs no battery, no boot up. And if you spill your Diet Mountain Dew on it, all it will get is wet. Well, I've been talking about schematic symbols for various simple components, and I'm going to continue that a little process here with the digital logic gate symbols. Now, binary digital logic gates basically take one or usually two logic states and combine them to get a third state that depends upon the type of gate. Each gate, each particular type of gate, performs what is known as a logic function. It takes one or two inputs and produces an output. A few logic gates have more than two inputs, but here we're basically dealing with those that have only two. You'll find this on page 55 of the book, the discussion of logic gates in general on pages 54 and 55 of the book. But this book really doesn't get into very much detail about how the logic gates actually work. It does describe them verbally and how, they're, how their functions turn out. But there's another way to do that, and it's called a truth table. Incidentally, if you're really into logic, if you like uh, this kind of thing, and you want to get more into the mathematics behind logic and how it relates to mathematics and uh, how logic is the foundation, really, of all mathematics, I recommend the book Logic Demystified, written by my nephew, Anthony Bautel, and myself. Uh, it's about a 350 or so page book, 375 pages long, including the index. Here, I just passed a, a point here where there are some uh, Boolean uh, symbols. Here's an, the final exam. There's a logic circuit right there that comprises several logic gates in combination. And this book discusses that kind of thing in addition to all the other aspects of logic from a mainly from a standpoint of the philosopher, but also to some extent from the standpoint of a mathematician, if you're into that kind of thing. But I'd like to right now just get into just outlining how these basic logic states work with one or two inputs. The NOT gate has only one input. All these others have two. And those are all symbolized on page 55. You'll see the gate symbols there. When you have two or more uh, logic states and you want to express all possible combinations of them, here's a little trick. Count up in binary. Zero, one, that's the decimal equivalent of 2 and 3. There are four states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Now let's just talk about not x. Not x. So that we uh, distinguish which one of these we want to talk about here. We just invert the state. 1, 1, 0, 0. Not 0 is 1. Not 1 is 0. Now as for the or, that is what is known as an inclusive OR, meaning that if at least one of the inputs is at the high state, that is logic 1, then the output is a logic 1, if at least one of them is. If they both are, then it's also 1. If they're both low, we get low, so it looks like that. We also have something called an exclusive OR. Now that is also known as either OR, and in that case, 
the two input states must be different, one or the other, but not both. So it's like the inclusive or except when you have both inputs high, you get a low at the output. So the exclusive or looks like that. The and, they must both be true or high, <laughs> true, truth or falsity, one equals true, zero equals false. They must both be the high state in order to get a high. Otherwise, if either or any of them are low, you get a low. Now we talk about the nor gate. That's just the or function followed by logical inversion or negation. So we simply reverse all of the or states. And so we can look down in the or column and just write whatever is its opposite here and get the nor function. As for the nand or not and function, that is simply the uh, negation of the and statements. So we get this. That's what a NAND gate does. Then the exclusive OR we've already outlined. And here again are the symbols. And you should be able to see these clearly enough. Um, a shows a NOT gate or inverter. That is an OR gate. Looks kind of like a boat with a concave stern and a pointy bow. C in figure 3-53 on page 55 shows an AND gate. It looks like a boat with a flat stern and a curvy bow. D here is what they would call a NOR gate, not OR. Looks just like an OR gate except there's a little, little tiny circle right there at the output. The NAND gate looks just like an AND gate but there's a little tiny circle there. The exclusive OR gate looks just like an OR gate, but there's an extra, a little extra thingy on the back there, on the stern. A little attachment on the stern there. So those are the symbols. There is one gate that I did not get into in the book, uh, and I, uh, but I will get into it here just so that uh, of interest, and that is what happens if you take an exclusive OR and follow it by an inverter? you get an XNOR gate. And that would look, the symbol for that, would look just like the symbol for the exclusive OR, but you'd have that little tiny circle added right there. That's what the symbol for an XNOR gate would be, and I'll, I'm sure you can guess what, uh, what that function's going to look like. You just reverse the XORs. So both logic states must be identical if you want to get a high at the output. If the logic states differ, you get a low. So that is a basic outline of the logic gate symbols that you'll find in this book. That, this book is mainly devoted, however, to analog electronics, transistors, resistors, capacitors, well, di uh, transistors aren't always analog, and neither are diodes, necessarily. But inductors, uh, basically analog circuits, like this classical analog circuit, a frequency-sensitive filter with inductors and capacitors, an LC filter. You'll get into all of that stuff in here, and I offer little tips and little tidbits and also little follow the flow uh, blurbs, heads up, blurbs, tips, 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 lots of tips. Follow the flow. That was something requested by reviewers of previous editions. They wanted to know how the currents flow through these circuits. Looking at the diagrams, how does the current actually go through them? Well, I'll explain that in a number of places here in this book. So that'll just about do it. That's the advertisement for Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Revised and edited by yours truly, originated by the authors Traster and Lisk, who provided the foundation for this edition. And I offer my thanks to them, and thanks to you, for purchasing this paper-bound book. It's a little pricey, 
but it's really built to last. Stan Jabalisco from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.